obviously being now in the director role, there's, you know, you, you have the experience of being a woman in, in meetings where you are the only woman and how yeah. do you manage your voice? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I've kind of just noticed that throughout the years, but, and, and try to think about it from a, from a perspective of, okay, how does that affect me or how does that affect uh, what we're doing? But I've just always, I'm always like, if something needs done, I'm going to do it and I'm going to find a way to do it. And not much can get in the way of that. So I think it's just kind of happened that progression where I've been here 15 years, but I'm really in my fourth job, um, which okay. sports psychology is a big part of it, but also the business side, which I probably shouldn't tell people I never had a business class, but <laughs> I've I still learn every day. I'm, I'm always learning and I'm thankful to my boss who, who does have a lot of business background, who, who helps me a lot. It helps, helps with that piece of it. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and with, as far as like the sports psychology and the, the mental training, uh, obviously I'm, some of your approaches are different based on age of age of your, the people that you're training. Right. Mm -hmm. And is it, have you, have you found it, um, is it harder once they, if they come to you older? <laughs> um, <laughs> it depends. Is it, you know, is it, does it require a little bit more versus if they were like four or five or six or something like that? <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting because I know people always say, well, which is needs it the most or, you know, what about girls and boys? And yeah, I, I've really noticed that it's it's not usually the age, the sport, the gender. It's okay. it's that. Um, and so obviously you have to tra change your message for the age they are. Right. Um, and we do a lot of group stuff. So we'll do a lot of group concepts like it's the group session and they're learning about focus. And then we also do one-on-one -on -one sessions. So again, that's that's a different approach where you can get way more in depth with one person than obviously with giving the basic foundational knowledge in a group. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, it, it's funny because it, see how different people are affected by different things. Um, I see, we've seen a lot of kids who, um, if they have a lot of pressure or it's all about the outcome or that fixed mindset or winning or in, you know, a ranking or how many stars they have. And that's all anybody talks about and cares about. They can really be kind of have a hard time with the mental side. Cause they're so hard on themselves. They're perfectionistic. Yeah. They're that type a. And so we're trying to get them to shift into a growth mindset and to have some perspective. Like with my tennis kids, I would tell them like <laughs> Roger Federer can lose more points and win a match. And he makes this many errors or, you know, and I always do a male and female, you know, Roger Federer or, yeah. or Serena Williams, yeah. you know, they can win a match, but they're still going to have this many errors. They're still going right. to miss this many times. You're getting mad when you miss one shot. Right. And why yeah, that's, is that? That's <laughs> yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's interesting because it, I, I have, there's not a trend of, of age gender sport. I mean, obviously some of the individual sports, but it can connect to anybody. And I think what I've seen too is as a, in the kind of a management role, it helps to just day to day with, with the staff, you know, you can kind of see how they're reacting to stuff or how they take feedback or how things are perceived. And, and now it kind of helps with that side of the job too. <laughs> mental training for, you know, we do it with the corporate groups and, and things like that too, that this high performance mindset, it doesn't matter what the performance is. It yeah. can be your job day to day, or it can be sports. I mean, I, I'm sitting here thinking, I, I think that's a wonderful. I think everybody should be able to, or should have an opportunity if they could have some of this uh, mindset training, because it really is, it's, it's, it's good for the sports, but I can see people doing so much better. Like you said, even from, from their relationships personally, and from a career standpoint. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. You, um, you mentioned, um, you're, you're the first female director and you've been in that position for how long? Um, it's been probably just over a year or so now. Yeah. Um, so, so we have the eight sports and, and APD, which is athletic and personal development. And so there hasn't been, there had not been a female director in any of the sports or APD until, until about that year or so okay. ago. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's amazing. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> 
Thank um, you. You empowered female athlete program. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. Sure. Um, so it, it's been about probably four or five years ago now. Um, we were working with the athletes and really being engaged with the female and the male. And it's an interesting thing here at IMG. At that point, I think we were about 80% boys and 20% girls. Okay. So it was really interesting, um, that dynamic. And then I had the pleasure of being on the discipline committee at that time, which um, I don't have to do that anymore. But um, somehow I got nominated for that one. And, and so we were having girls come to discipline committee and you started kind of asking questions and you started to see that what's going on here? Is this a confidence thing? Is this a what what's really going on? And so we dove into a couple things. One was we felt like our female athletes were struggling with some confidence, struggling with some of the the societal issues that, that were happening where maybe they don't get as much as males do, or maybe they're not recognized as much. And um, you kind of noticed it in a, you know, well, why do they get to do that? And we don't, and yeah, yeah. just the comparisons. <clears throat> and then, um, I had a colleague, Vanessa, who's now at university of Louisville. And we were, we, we both did our sports psych degrees at university of Tennessee. So we started looking at the research around, you know, the female athletes in sport with confidence and self-esteem and even some of the components of eating disorders and stuff like that, social media, all, all of that type of stuff. And, and there's a good amount of research that talks about how the effects of some of these different things. And then I was at a conference and um, University of Missouri does women for women and men for men. And they were presenting on that as well. And it kind of all just came together where, okay, this is a program we can develop and start because it's a need it's a needs analysis that we've done for these female athletes at IMG that we think it could be a benefit. And so we created this curriculum where they would come as, you know, their team or as a group. And we'd really look at things like, um, identity and we'd look at confidence and we'd go over social media stuff. And so we'd use a lot of videos where it would show some of, some of the differences or how commercials might, uh, have a stereotype in them. Okay, well, let's yeah. talk about that. And so we talk about authenticity and we talk about how, um, you know, feedback and how do you handle feedback? How do you give feedback and make sure people can take it in certain ways? And so we kind of created this whole curriculum around it and really noticed that the girls really enjoyed it because they got to talk about stuff because we made it very different than some of our other classes. It was very open talk about whatever you want. We shared our stories with them. So it was a men- mental coach, nutrition, and also leadership coach. So it was a combined group kind of thing where we all came up with content. We all worked with the female athletes and kind of gave them a space to learn and grow. And, and it's, it's evolved over the years. So we've continued to do it over the years. And now even some of it might be uh, kind of preparing for the college transition or some of the other things. Cause some of that, it, we actually noticed a shift, um, where some of our younger athletes, they weren't dealing with the same issues or the issues that people, girls were dealing with four or five years ago. They weren't feeling the same things. Like they actually felt more empowered. They had seen more role models and they weren't as exposed to some of the negative mm-hmm. stereotypes. So that, so we kind of shifted it. And then we also created, um, through the work of some of my colleagues, we said, well, if we're going to do a female athlete one, we should do a male athlete. So we called it building men of character, uh, BMOC. So really focused around respect. Um, and so they did, yeah, they kind of are the, the male and female counterparts and, um, you know, credit to our staff for continuing and um, evolving it. But, but yeah, it was something that really, I mean, for me has been one of the (laughs) favorite things I've taught or favorite classes and sessions I've done and went back to with girls soccer and girls basketball. And, you know, we talked about culture a lot too. We, I was sitting in a girls basketball session with 13 girls and 11 of them were not from the U S. And so we got to have that conversation. And so it, it brought up so many amazing topics and, and really has been such a fun thing for us to, to, share with the athletes here and, and progress their curriculum each year. And is, <clears throat> is that something that, that every, every female athlete goes, goes through this curriculum? 
this empowerment female athlete all right yeah we we definitely get all the team sports and then yeah. we try as much as we can to also get the individual sports and that's okay. an interesting difference too you know you see <clears> the difference in that um but yeah so it, it depends it's depend year and the scheduling and all that but as much as we can we try to make sure that they're exposed to it throughout their time here with us Let me see. You know, so I think we're we're almost out of time, but I, I I really want you to if you had a couple words to say to somebody who's aspiring to do something great, <laughs> um, because you've obviously you you've knocking down some doors and you bust through some ceilings and you're you're doing some great things with empowerment, empowering empowering females over at IMG. Um, what piece of advice would you offer in closing? What would you offer? Um, oh man. Um, I think I would say I had, I had someone tell me that it wasn't possible. Um, and, and it wasn't even about being a female, but it was about being able to do applied sports psychology, working with athletes. And someone told me that there's no jobs or that's not possible. And I think for me, I took it as a challenge and yeah. said, okay, what, well watch this. And so I think that that mentality of, yes, I can do this, or I'm going to find a way to, to figure this out and make it happen would really be, be kind of my advice. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I drove myself from Tennessee to Florida to do my interview to try to get the job here. I, I was going to find a way to make it happen. You were determined. And I, I, yeah. I mean, it was it, the, the, and not letting doubt or fear or things like that get in your way, because there's going to be a lot of people who doubt you and who say you can't do it, but if you, if you prepare well and you can take the information you have and put it into a, a format that says, yes, this is why this should happen. And, and I think also it's just how you work and your body of work should speak for itself. You know, like I never, one thing I'm proud of is I never asked for any of these jobs. It was, I did the work and then got People the job. You out. They sought you out. Right. Yeah. Or it just it just happens. So yeah, find a way, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. And then, but it's also, you have to show it too. Like you, you can't just hope you can't it happens. Just want it you you have to make it happen. Nothing, do nothing to get it. <laughs> Absolutely. You got to do more than just want it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to give you your, thank you, Dr. Taryn Morgan for, for, uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. sounds like you have a lot of a lot of hats you're wearing over there. Um, I think this you, you're doing some amazing things, and I think it, it, what you've shared and what you've talked about, I think, will be useful uh, in, in helping people understand what all what's all entailed uh, over at IMG and the things that you guys do to to, to make these world class athletes be so great. Um, if you are interested in learning more about just what goes over at IMG, you, they have a beautiful website, beautiful facility. Uh, again, we thank her for taking her time out and um, we'll be back next week, guys. And until then, you all continue to stay happy and healthy and we'll talk to you later.